channel we've got another video this video we're going to be fixing wheels we're going to be refurbishing wheels if you want to call it that we're going to try and paint these wheels now the wheels i've got uh, they've, they've got real damage not that nice little stuff you'll be seeing <laughs> on your other videos these ones have actually got some they're actually quite crusty if i'm being honest so let's have a look so now look these are the mark four alloys now if you look closely you can see the sort of damage around the edges you know some of it's flaking off so we've got quite a bit of work here to make it right and they're all like that some have got that alloy flicking off look look at that you see that that's coming off so these are gonna these need quite a bit of work to be honest i'm not really a fan of um sanding and all that but i know the results so good that you it's something that has to be done so um yeah that's what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to try and fix these wheels and make them good so stick with me okay so the first thing you want to do is give your wheels a good wash you want to try and get as much grease and grime and crud off it as possible Use a brush for where you can't really put your hands in and for some of the harder, more stubborn grime, use a wire brush and really try and clean out anything that's gonna, you know, affect your finish at the end. So cleaning is really important. Okay, so these come with center caps and it's pretty much the same thing. Make sure you give them a good wash and um, yeah, try and get as much off as possible. Now in the center cap, you may have some sticky double-sided tape on there. What I used was a wire wheel just to really clean it up in there and just to get all that rubbish off else you'd be there picking it forever. So that's what that's the way you get it off. Now I used like a degreaser here once I cleaned off all the rubbish, all the sticky stuff, just to make sure it was really clean and ready for primer and sanding. I hate to make my job any harder than it has to be, so I used a wire brush wheel. You can get these from most shops, they're available and they just go into the drill and just do a lot of sanding for you. Because there's a lot of loose material on here, this really just cuts the time in half and I think it makes it look quite a lot better from the gate. But this will free up any material, get away, get rid of any kind of paint or any rubbish that's, that's hanging around on there. So it really chews up all them loose bits so you can actually get to the sanding that you need to do and it should all adhere properly. Okay, so ha once you've done your sanding and you've cleaned up the most part that you want to clean up and you're happy with what you've done, just give it a little clean and just clear off any debris and any rubbish that might be on it. Now I put some masking tape around the edges like I'm doing here. Um, obviously it's to be easy if you had to tie her off and you don't have to do this part, but just mask it by slipping one edge in and then wrapping the rest over the tire just to protect it from any paint and anything else that's gonna be you're gonna be doing in it in the meanwhile. Okay. So now we've got all the wheels all wrapped up. Um, all the edges wrapped up. What we're going to be doing is mixing up the filler. If you're in Australia, they call it bog. I think if you're in America, they call it pond bondo. But we um, we call it filler. We call it filler. So we're going to mix up some filler and um, try and sort this out. Now remember to read the label because it may vary from filler to filler, make to make. But the way we it's on this one is that you use about a golf ball size to a pea size ratio. Now once you've got that ratio intact, you mix it up. You mix it up pretty quick because it doesn't give you much time. You know, you, you really ain't got a lot of time to play with it. So then now you've got your filler, just work on all the areas that you could see a bit of damage on that you want to come up really, really good. Just be patient because any extra stuff you put on, you will have to sand off. So try and, you know, take your time and be careful not to put too much or any unnecessary amount of filler anywhere because you end up spending an eternity just sanding it off. So once it's dry, which shouldn't take too long, read like once again, read the label on your tab. Use this sanding wheel because I just don't like to do sanding. This takes a lot of pressure off your... You just use a sanding wheel and just start to work the areas so you can get a nice smooth surface. Now this was 80 grit, um, but I think I went down to 120 in the end, um, but it's all pretty much the same stuff. So you can just see here, I'm just working the sandpaper around the edges where it might have spilt and been a bit of an odd shape. So just work it and get it in the areas that you want to get it in, so you can get that smooth finish that you're looking for. 
So now you're happy with what you've done, your sanding work, just time to dust it all off and, and clean off any dust that might be, that could affect it later on. Now I'm using a degreaser here, a degreaser wax and dirt remover just to make sure I've got a clean surface to spray my primer onto. Your primer, which acts like a, a filler in a can or like an undercoat, it gives you like a surface to, to lay everything on. Um, just take your time and spray on your filler. Now you can go quite heavy on this because anything that's too much you can actually rub it down lightly. But um, yep, you can you can just lay it on as, as thickly as you want really, but not too thick because you don't want runs. And like I say, anything you do too much of, you're gonna be paying for it in the end. So that's what you do. You spray it on until you get a nice solid coat that you're actually happy with, that you can actually work with. And um, yep, then it's on to the next step. So now we've put our primer on, it's time to hit it up with some base coat. Now I've got a can of, uh, I don't even know what silver it is, but it's quite a nice silver. It's not like the normal um, alloy wheel silver, it's a little bit darker than that. So we're going to use this and apply our base coat. But a good idea, so I've heard, um, is to put this in some hot water, just to warm up the temperature so it comes out a bit easier if it's a cold day. Now it's not particularly cold, but any help I can get with this I'm going to use. So. What we're going to do is put this in some water and then fill it up with some clear coat after. Now if this is your first time spraying, there is an art to it. You have to really start by dusting over, which they call a tack layer. You're just giving it a little feathering, you know, just, just to start it off because you can't lay it too heavy. So you're just trying to just, you know, the way you would see the ladies put perfume on in the old days, you're just trying to just spray it and walk into it sort of thing. You're just laying a very slight layer over it. And you continue to do that, you continue to do that till you get your full color through. Now, you wait about five to 10 minutes each coat um, before you actually lay the next coat, but that's what you should do. You, you're just trying to dust the layer on and slowly, slowly build it up. Just showing you how easy it is. Even my son can do this. It's just, just a little dust over. Everywhere, everywhere, go away. Not... Just a quick clip just to show him, actually, my little boy That's actually enough. doing the work on the car and no, anyone no, can no. do it if you're willing to learn. Okay, so back to work again. Just carry on dusting these layers on until you get full color. Now, it, just take, like I say, just take your time, be patient and it will come together pretty nicely. So just carry on, take your time, dust, 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 and get in the nooks and crannies. You don't want to miss anywhere that people might be able to see. So be patient and continue. It should end up looking something like this. The centre caps in this car is pretty much the same thing. Just spray your degreaser on it. Make sure it's nice and clean. So you, when you apply the paint, it sticks. Because this will pick up a lot of dirt in the crevices. And just dust it over, as you can see I'm doing here. I mean, this is the last coat where I'm, I've actually become quite comfortable, but it's all the same in the end. You can see it looks quite nice and silver there. Okay, now we've sprayed on the paint on the on the wheels with the help of me and my son. You see him do it, so anyone could do it. Um, next thing to do is just spray on some lacquer. Now we're going to put it on in pretty much the same way, where we just dust the light coat on, and then we get heavier and heavier and heavier in the coat without putting on too much runs. Now you've got to think to yourself, the, way I, the best way I can describe it is think of it putting on after, sorry, putting on deodorant. If you're putting on deodorant, you wouldn't want it right under your arm. You want to give yourself a little bit of a distance and that's how the way you kind of want to apply this. You want to spread it a little bit of distance. Don't really get too close because the closer you get, the more concentrated it is and the more likely you are to get runs. So think of it, you don't want to sting your armpits. You don't want to sting the life out of yourself. So just give yourself a bit of distance treat the wheels in exactly the same way and it should come out okay so let's get on to applying the lacquer so applying the lacquer is pretty much like i just explained earlier you just want to dust it over tack coat first light coat and then slowly slowly build and gradually get up there you know um try and get a good one try and get a good quality lacquer in, in a can lacquer if you're using a can and um, you should really reap the benefits from that. Um, it, take your time, like I said before. I mean, you see me doing it, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable and I know what I'm looking for a little bit more. But just take your time and slowly dust it over, dust it over and be patient. 
like I say, all the work is in the actual prep, so that's what it's about. As you can see again, my son's actually having another go, because I'm just trying to show that you can do it if you learn, you know, he'll need a bit more practice, but you can do it if you, tr if, if you just stick at it. And hopefully it should look something like this towards the end, with a little bit of shine to it. Okay, so now get we've done it. We've sprayed it all on. We've got the we've got the uh, the gloss on. With help from Amac Vads. <laughs> Go away, <laughs> <laughs> my little boy. Yeah, so um, that's it. I'm gonna show you how it looks like in a minute once I've stripped it all down. Just as a reminder, I'm just showing you what the wheels were like before and what they've come from. They've come from these scraped up peeling sort of wheels um, really weren't in good condition really wouldn't look nice on your car um, with a little bit of work they come up really nice clean and tidy I mean I don't think the, the camera really captured how well they came out but you know they really did a good job for such little labor done the wheels and um, yeah it's all been lacquered up and painted up and repaired where we could now I'm going to give you a couple of points that I think are really important number one Preparation. Preparation is a key here. Make sure you get it. Make sure you sand it very, very, very well, or you will still have imperfections showing up in your paint. Um, another thing I would say, in hindsight, I think it's better if you take the wheel off. Sorry, the tire. If you take the tire off, once you take the tire, you can get around it a whole lot better, and it take you half the time. Um, um, I think they're the two main standout points. The painting would be a matter of time. You'd have to like acquire the skills and just take your time. But for a simple DIY in the back of your garden sort of setup, I think this is really, really good news and it makes a, a fairly decent impression. You may have to clean up around the sides, but it's, it's not, not, not a big deal. Um, also, another way to do this is you could actually deflate the tire. That would give you a bit more leeway, but really and truly, just taking it off is best. I would have done, I would have taken it off, but I wanted to make this as DIY at your home as much as possible. So I hope you like that. I hope you decide to do something with that. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.